The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank created some uncertainty over what the Fed would do when it comes to today's rate hike campaign. But after the central bank decided to raise rates by 25 basis points, Fed Chair Jerome Powell reiterated confidence in the banking system. Let's listen. Our view is that the, the banking system is sound and it's resilient. It's got strong capital and liquidity. We took powerful actions with Treasury and the FDIC, which demonstrate that all depositor savings are safe and that the banking system is safe. Deposit flows in the banking system have stabilized over the last week. Um, and the last thing I'll say is that we've undertaken, we're undertaking a thorough internal review that will identify where we can strengthen supervision and regulation. Joining us now for more on what this all means for banks is Dick Beauvais, Odeon Capital Group Financial Strategist. Good to see you, sir. So your reaction to first what the Fed did to stabilize our banking system and then how Jerome Powell characterized it there. Well, number one, uh, the Fed really didn't do very much. Uh, all the Fed did was create a PR program with uh, the Treasury Secretary and the President to uh, assure people that their money was safe in the banking system. And, and in that regard, that's correct. What is incorrect is that it is not due to anything that the federal government is doing. In other words, the federal government is not coming up with any money whatsoever. So it leads to this point. They have it to stabilize the banking system. All of the money that has gone into stabilizing the banking system to this point has come from the banks themselves. There are two places you can look for that. Number one, FDIC insurance is totally funded by the banks. So if there's any money that comes out of the FDIC insurance pool, you know, to assist the banks, mm -hmm. uh, to, to assist the trouble banks, it came from all of the banks. Number two, if you take a look at the Federal Reserve, I mean, you know, everybody's arguing the Federal Reserve put $300 billion into the banks in the last seven days. What they're not saying is, where did that money come from? Where did the Fed get that money? The reason that they got that money is because the banking system deposited $440 billion into the Federal Reserve in the last seven days. So, so the net effect is if we would take the focus off the government supporting everything and put it where it's really working, which is in capitalism, which is in the banking system, you will find that the banks themselves provided the money to the FDIC, provided the money to the Federal Reserve, and took that money and used it to stabilize the banks that were in trouble. So I think it is a very important point. I think to the degree that people think that the United States government is the only resource to assist the banking industry, they're not going to believe that the, the banking industry is safe. Because if the government and the Fed and the FDIC have to step up to stabilize the banks, then no one's going to believe that the banks are safe. If it was understood that the banks came up with the money to stabilize the system, then they could believe that the system is safe. And the system is safe, it's sound, and it's solvent, exactly as uh, Mr. Powell said. Dick, what about the regulation aspect of all this? Because Powell did say that there is some need to strengthen supervision and also need for more regulation. And since we last spoke, we certainly have still continued to see some jitters out there in the market with the recent selling of First Republic, the selling in shares, I should add, Pack West today, that stock under pressure after the, a guide, the update there from that bank about the deposit outflows. What do you think needs to happen? Has that at all changed from the last time we spoke? Well, you know, I'm going to go back to the uh, problem in 2008. You know, the Congress set up a committee to look at what happened to the uh, system in 2008. And, and this, you know, long, thick report, you know, I think it's 600 pages deep. You know, it starts off with the fact that the Federal Reserve did not do its job, that the uh, federal regulators did not do their job, that there were laws, that there were regulations and laws in place, which if these people had done their jobs, you would not have run into the crisis at the magnitude that you saw back in that period. And what did Chairman Powell just say? He said that they didn't do their job. He said that, that we had the regulators on site, we saw the problem, but we didn't do anything about it. They did not do their job. That means that we don't need new regulations. We need people who abide by the regulations. And that starts with the people at the Fed, and it starts with the people at the FDIC, and it starts with the people at the controller of the currency. If they did their job, which they did not do, we wouldn't need regulation. However, 
because they've come up with this view that the regulations are not adequate, we're going to see a whack at the banks here, which is going to drive us into a recession. All right. What they're going to do is the first thing they're going to do is they're going to change the accounting rules, which have to be changed. And they're going to ask the banks to come up with more common equity. So the banks are not going to be, if you will, buying back stock. They're going to be issuing common equity. The second thing that they're going to do is they're going to ask for a change in the structure of how you look at a, a, a security. And when they do that, it's going to make it appear that the equity in the banking system is inadequate. So what will the banks do if the Fed comes along and says you don't have enough equity in your bank? The banks are going to reduce credit. They're going to reduce credit to the economy. So the economy is going to get less credit. The cost of the credit is going to go up. The banks are going to have to come up with more common equity. That is going to cause a recession. And therefore, I think it is very clear that by the end of this year, this economy is going to have to live with something it doesn't understand. High cost of money you know, money which is not freely available at the flick of a finger because the Fed cannot increase the money supply in order to meet the needs of the banking system because to do so stimulates inflation. If, if uh, you take a look at the money supply of the United States at the present time, it is actually shrinking. When have you ever seen inflation expand when the money supply of a nation is shrinking? I mean, I imagine it's happened somewhere, and I imagine, you know, people like Carmen Reinhardt, who is, who is a genius, you know, would be able to tell you, I've never seen it. All right. I've never seen it. So if the money supply of the United States is shrinking, if we're going to tighten, you know, if the Fed is going to continue to shrink its balance sheet, if the banks are going to tighten credit, how do you avoid a recession? You can't do it. And therefore, bank earnings are going to be under stress. And people who are thinking about bank stocks right now should think more closely about what they're doing and where they should put their money is in the preferred issues mm -hmm. of the banks because the preferred issues will not miss the dividend. Boy, Dick, we wish you had you sitting in that press conference with Mr. Powell. He also commented on the potential credit tightening and how accurate some of the projections out there are. Let's listen to this. There's a great deal of literature on the connection between tighter credit conditions, economic activity, hiring, and inflation. Very large body of literature. The question is how significant will this credit tightening be and how, how sustained will it be? That's, that's the issue. And we don't really see it yet. It's so, so people are making estimates, you know, people are publishing estimates, and it's, but it's very kind of rule of thumb uh, guesswork almost at this point. But we think it's, it's potentially quite real. How will the credit conditions tighten as a result of everything we've seen here? Well, I think it, it's clear that, uh, first off, you know, the borrowing has started to weaken in the system already. In other words, if you take a look, commercial industrial loans, they're no longer growing at 10 or 11% the way they were a year ago. They're growing at 1% or 2%. If you look at mortgage credit, it is no longer growing. It's it started to flatten out. If you take a look at credit cards, uh, you know, borrowing, credit card borrowings are not growing at 17 to 18%. They're still growing at 14%, but, you know, they're coming down dramatically. Auto loan credit is coming down. The banks are going to take a look at the income statements of individuals, and they're basically going to say, I'm not sure I want to lend you this money at this point in time, because the cost of money to me is high. And if I have to pass along that cost of money to you, you can't afford it. Therefore, we're not going to give you the loan. <laughs> Dick, Bo me. Dick Beauvais, always great to have you here at Yahoo Finance. Thanks so much for hopping on with us this afternoon. We look forward to having you back. Thank you.